Breaking news, Nikon leaked their ZH camera with a global shutter to take on the Sony A9 Mark III. I'm gonna give you my take on the new Apple Vision Pro augmented reality goggles and what they mean for photographers and videographers. I'll also discuss Canon's announcement that they're number one, or is it Sony? And how the Fuji X100 6 has outsold Sony by a factor of 50. All that and more, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes this news piece possible as well as amazing websites. So much better than your social media. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony where you can get a custom domain. So much better than being at gmail.com. Something professional where you can take orders from clients, schedule appointments, sell your prints, show your videography reel. Squarespace makes it all easy. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony. Get a free trial, no credit card required. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. First, so many people have asked me my thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro. Should photographers get it to replace their monitors to see things even bigger? My answer, I don't give a f I do not give a f about the Apple Vision Pro. It will have no impact on photographers and videographers. Yes, I'm taking a hard stance that's going against all the popular influencers because starting with the original Vive VR headset that you had to plug into a full computer, I was experimenting with that and 3D video, 3D stills to see what impact it might have on photography. I got both of the first two quests and I continued to buy new 3D cameras as they evolved. I even had the old Nintendo Virtual Boy and they were all cool, they were all fun but none of them took off, and I don't believe the Apple Vision Pro will either. Here's the thing I've learned about photography. Convenience always trumps quality. We are talking about the convenience of the consumer. Like in 2008, before smartphones were super popular, almost all of us held our cameras horizontally like this. People would view them on computer screens, so horizontal make perfect sense. That's the way our eyes are aligned. But since the success of Instagram and TikTok, more and more of us are viewing photos like this on vertical screens. So we have to turn our cameras like this to optimize the quality for these screens. Now, it would have been really easy. We could have just turned the screens like this, right? The people consuming your photos and video are willing to sacrifice significant amounts of quality so they can hold a phone like this instead of having to hold it like this. Do you think those people are going to be willing to wear heavy, sweaty, expensive headsets? No, they absolutely will not. They are embarrassing, they are cringy, they are overpriced, they are uncomfortable. For $3,500, you could buy a beautiful set of three real physical monitors and hook them up to your MacBook instead of trying to get just one screen in virtual reality where you kind of can't type very well. Yes, it's just the first version of Apple Vision Pro, but this is not my first VR headset. I do not believe anytime soon, consumers are going to be hungry for horizontal 3D content. So for the time being, at ease, completely disregard the very brief VR trend. Up next, an announcement from Canon that they are the number one camera manufacturer. That was followed shortly thereafter by a Petapixel article. They reached out to Sony and Sony said that they are number one, but Sony also said, but hey, we weren't gonna mention it, but since Canon mentioned it and you asked, we'll mention it. Okay, this is all pretty nonsense. The Japanese camera companies have this rivalry where they're all trying to be number one and it has basically no impact on either of us. Like pretty much, we just have to ask ourselves, is a camera company going to continue to survive and thrive. Canon and Sony are both going to continue to survive and thrive. And in fact, I would argue that a camera manufacturer being number one is actually a drawback to consumers of that company because here's what happens when a camera company is number one, they begin to worry about competing with themselves. Canon has been number one, and for the longest time, we've seen them trying less hard, holding back features. That's why so many of their photography cameras had video features held back because they didn't want to compete with their own cinema lineup. Sony, on the other hand, was willing to throw all that stuff in when they were a distant third or second place. But now that Sony might also be number one, we see some of that same behavior. We see them holding back features 
Things that could be a firmware update for my Sony a7S III never get released because they want me to buy the next camera. They're not worried about losing my sale to Canon or Nikon. They're worried about losing my next sale to Sony. When a company is not number one, their behavior is different. They are motivated to try to get all the consumers that they can to throw in as many features as possible because they're not cannibalizing sales. They're not eating themselves. They're eating Canon or Sony's market. And that's why I think the Nikon Z9 and Z8 had so many more features than the competing cameras from Sony and Canon. They, they could have probably given you 8K at 60 frames per second raw, but they didn't because they'll save that for a later release or for one of their cinema cameras. But Nikon is just like, we are losing here. We need to try a little bit harder. And if we do throw everything into a camera, it will just pull in consumers from these other two far bigger companies. When a company has a small market share, they can be more aggressive. And for that reason, consumers are often better off going for the company that's in second, third, fourth, or fifth place. So maybe Canon is number one, maybe Sony is number one, but either way, I don't think it's good news for us. Speaking of Canon, Canon Rumors has an updated roadmap that's not exactly great news. They're saying the Canon R5 Mark II is going to be announced and released in April. That's great news. But the Canon R1 is only going to get a development announcement then, which means it might not be ready for the Olympics, or maybe they'll just have a few hand-built models ready for the Olympics. In other words, we probably won't be able to get our hands on an R1, I'm guessing, until fall at the earliest, or maybe closer to 2025. That's bad news. But Canon Rumors does say there were several new lenses coming. Uh, 28 millimeter prime, which might be f1.4 or f1.8. We're not sure if that's an L lens or not. A 35 f1.2L, which I will immediately buy for a podcast studio because right now we have a 35 f2.8 macro lens on there, which is just the closest that they have. Really glad to see Canon developing some new RF primes. And a new version of the 70 to 200 f2.8. This is an internal zoom lens. I think it'll have better quality because they're current 7200 f2.8 does not compete with the Sony or Nikon because they decided to optimize it for size. So be sure to subscribe and we'll have reviews for all those products as soon as the production copies are available. In other news, the Fuji X106 outsold the Nikon ZF here, also a retro styled camera, by 35 times. That's according to Sony Alpha Rumors who contacted some camera stores. But based on our own affiliate behavior, I totally believe that. We have seen far more people buying the X106 than we did the Nikon ZF or any other camera. Sony Alpha Rumors also said that the X106 outsold the A7C2 and the A7CR, two compact interchangeable lens Sony cameras that almost fulfill the same niche. The Fuji outsold those two combined by 50 times. The Fuji is wildly popular. It has become a meme on TikTok because it's cool, because it's sexy, because it's fun. And I hope the other manufacturers take notice. The ZF, it doesn't quite do it. Sure, it's technically a retro camera, but it's kind of bulky. It still has a PASM mode. It's just not the same. Camera manufacturers need to get in touch with a younger audience. They need to stop talking to the people who already buy cameras and try to reclaim some of the market that they lost to smartphones because these people are willing to buy cameras. Now, our lead story, the Nikon Z8 with its global shutter. Nikon Rumors calls this a wild rumor, but I decided to explore it. Could Nikon release a competitor to the Sony A9 Mark III with a global shutter? And what would that look like? Well, first, the suggested name of Nikon ZH harkens back to the Nikon D2H. The H here means it was a high-speed camera, which had a lower number of megapixels, but a higher frame rate. So Nikon released two D2s. The D2X was 12 megapixels, which was a high number of megapixels, but only five frames per second, which was still pretty fast. The D2H went to a blazing eight frames per second, but sacrifice two thirds of that image quality by dropping down to four megapixels. Now, okay, we've come a long way in 20 years because now the A9 is 24 megapixels, twice the higher res camera and 120 <laughs> frames per second. I think the Nikon ZH, which might be called the Nikon Z9H, would be in a Z9 body, 
just like this camera here, but it would probably have a sensor very similar to the Sony A9 Mark III, probably the same sensor or a slight variation thereof, because Nikon gets their sensors from Sony. So it could very well have the same specs of 24 megapixels and 120 frames per second. That is entirely possible. They just need to buy the sensor and integrate it and then they can sell it. But the real question is, will Sony sell Nikon global shutters? Or do they want to keep that technology for themselves? Now, Sony has been selling sensors to Nikon and other companies for a long time, and they take a lot of pride in being the number one sensor manufacturer, and so far it has not held back their competitiveness. You might suggest that they want to keep all the global shutter production for their own A9 Mark III's, except it doesn't seem like Sony is having a hard time producing the A9 Mark III, either because they're extremely efficient at manufacturing or maybe because there's not that much demand. I don't know how many that they're selling. But either way, there seems to be enough of them. If this isn't supply constrained, I think Sony probably would sell a global shutter to Nikon. But at the same time, I think it would take Nikon at least a year to get it properly integrated. So maybe 2025, we'll be seeing that Z9H. But I also have to ask, is it worth it to Nikon? They have had a lot of layoffs. I think they are restricted in the amount of development that they can do. And they still have some progress flushing out the lower end series of cameras. Even though we love the Z8 and Z9, the other cameras still need a lot of work. Would I take any of their development resources to make a top end sports camera? Nikon doesn't really lead in sports. That is very much Canon's world, followed by Sony. And Nikon, you almost never see them on the sidelines. I know they would like to have that market, but every engineering person that they assign to the Z9H is one less that could be making the next generation Nikon ZF or Z30, something that might sell a hundred or a thousand times more than a high-end Z9H would. So if I were the product manager here, I think I would just let Sony win the global shutter contest and I would put my energy into gaining the lower end consumer part of the market. In the comments down below, tell me what you think. Would you buy a Z9H if it were $5,500, $6,000? Or do you think Nikon should maybe put their energy elsewhere? Does the Apple Vision Pro have legs or is it complete nonsense? Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Squarespace. Start at squarespace.com slash Tony to create a gorgeous website for you. Get your own professional domain, your own email addresses. Instead of sending people to Instagram or TikTok or whatever the latest social media platform is, you will have a permanent home on the web that you completely control, that looks gorgeous on smartphones, tablets, computers, that prioritizes you. Instead of encouraging your potential customers to keep scrolling onto the next site, own your presence on the web, starting at squarespace.com slash Tony. You get a completely free trial, no obligation, no credit card, try it out. I promise you'll love it. And when you do, the coupon code Tony gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Bye.